Hi, I'm Dr. Billy Redflop and welcome to ABA-ish. Today's video is going to be a little more ABA than ish because this is one of our videos that's really geared towards practitioners or educators who have a background in behavior intervention. Today I'm going to be talking about function-based intervention and I'll be specifically encouraging you to think beyond extinction when you think about function-based intervention. To begin, behavior function refers to the reason or purpose for a behavior. It's the consequence that sometimes follows the behavior and makes the behavior worthwhile for the individual to engage in. We often say the function of the behavior is what is maintaining the behavior. For inappropriate behavior, behavior analysts have studied and found several common functions or reasons for inappropriate behaviors. These include things such as attention, escape or avoidance of non-preferred situation or aversive stimuli, access to tangible items or preferred activities, increased adult compliance with requests. You will also hear the term automatic reinforcement, which refers to behavior that be occurs, occurs because of some consequence that does not require another person be present to deliver it. So an example of this would be if you have a headache and you take an aspirin to hopefully reduce your pain. It didn't require that another person be there for you to get the consequence, pain reduction, which is why you continue to take aspirin when you have a headache. One question I get asked a lot is, if I want to intervene to decrease a problematic behavior, do I always need to know the function of the behavior? And the honest answer is that we don't always need to know the function. There are times that we can try what is often called healthy contingencies to first see if those are sufficient to reduce a behavior of concern. By healthy contingencies, I mean giving as many preferred consequences as possible for appropriate behavior and as few preferred consequences as possible for inappropriate behavior. I talk about this a lot if you listen to any of my caregiver videos on this channel. I encourage them to give high energy to behaviors that we want to see more of and low energy for behaviors we want to see less of. Because in a lot of situations, that is actually sufficient to reduce problematic behavior. However, there are times that we need to know the behavior function specifically. And this is because function-specific intervention is much more likely to be effective compared to function non-specific intervention. So for example, if we have a child for whom we've been trying to get healthy contingencies in place and it's not working, their behavior seems to be treatment resistant, that would be a time that knowing the function specific would be very, very important. Other times that it's important for me to know the specific function of behavior include if we have a child who's engaging in really dangerous behavior or the behavior is a big barrier for them. So what this might look like is an individual who's maybe not being able to go to general education settings because of their problematic behavior. It's really impacting their life. In those situations, I often want to do an assessment of specific function because I want to have the best chance of helping the individual as quickly as possible, which means having a targeted intervention. I also feel this way when I have a caregiver who is really at capacity, meaning sometimes you can tell a caregiver just does not have a lot of energy to give. And in those situations, it can be really helpful for me to know the specific function of the child's behavior so that I can provide the caregiver very targeted and specific recommendations rather than having them think broadly about a lot of different things. If we do want to know the function of a behavior, we have a bunch of different options for how we can assess that. They vary in degree of accuracy from our indirect measures, which include things like rating scales and interviews and are typically our least accurate, to experimental or functional analyses, which are typically our most accurate because they involve actual manipulation of the situation to see what behavior occurs and if behavior maintains. Now, again, the reason we care about behavior function is because we know that function-based intervention tends to be more effective than intervention that is not based on function, so then those healthy contingencies that I talked about. So if we can apply the knowledge we have regarding behavior function to the strategy that we're recommending or implementing, that's function-based intervention. We're taking what we know about why the individual engages in behavior and using that in our treatment. The most classic example of a function-based intervention is extinction. Extinction is when we sever the tie between the behavior and the consequence that maintains it. So we break that relationship between this is my behavior and this is what I get for it. As an example, let's assume we have an individual who engages in problematic behavior in order to access their tablet. So maybe they kick, yell, scream, and cry until their caregiver gives them their tablet so that they will play independently. 
In this case, if we wanted to implement extinction, we would teach the caregiver that even when your child kicks, screams, or cries, you should not give them the tablet. We need to break that relationship between using inappropriate behavior to access their tablet. If we can get the caregiver to do this with a high level of integrity, meaning they're doing it the way that we've described it, it will likely work very well. You will see that over time, the child will engage in less of those behaviors because it no longer produces that outcome that they're looking for. It doesn't get them the tablet. However, extinction is not the only function-based option, and in practice, extinction is often not the best strategy choice. So let's think about that child again who is engaging in problematic behavior in order to access their tablet. If the caregiver refuses to give them their tablet for the inappropriate behavior, what we often see is that behavior will get worse before it gets better. Practitioners use this phrase a lot because it describes an extinction burst. That means that there's a bunch of behavior that occurs when that relationship is first broken because the individual is trying to figure out how to get the thing that they've always gotten for the tablet. A classic example that I give to a caregiver to explain an extinction burst is if you put a dollar bill in a machine, you're used to it working every single time and you get your treat. One time you put that in there and it doesn't work, you might engage in some kind of crazy behaviors like you might kick the machine, you might have some choice words for the machine, and so your behavior got a little more extreme because all of a sudden it's not working the way it used to work. Because of these extinction bursts, what happens a lot of times is caregivers give up and they have low treatment integrity. When the burst is happening, they want it to stop, and so they deliver that consequence that the child is looking for. In my tablet example, this would be a caregiver saying, I can't take it anymore, here's your tablet. If caregivers have low levels of integrity, extinction-based interventions are very unlikely to work. Therefore, we need to really think about function-based interventions that do not include extinction. I'm gonna give you two examples right now of ones that I really like. The first is an antecedent-based intervention. This is non-contingent reinforcement, or NCR, and it's an intervention in which we proactively provide the consequence that maintains the behavior on a time-based schedule. So I often describe this to people as we're giving the consequence or the reinforcer for free. It often can reduce problematic behavior because it reduces the individual's motivation for that consequence. Let's talk about a few examples. In schools, we often find that students engage in problematic behavior in order to escape academic expectations. So how this might get shaped up is a kid starts to be inappropriate, a teacher tells them they need to leave the classroom and go to the principal's office. They are now leaving that academic setting and getting out of their work. One thing that we can do to reduce this type of behavior is called NCR break or creating a break schedule using NCR. So what that might look like is, say I have a student for whom they're able to work for about 20 minutes before they start to get disruptive. I could proactively schedule breaks for them every 15 minutes so that they are no longer motivated to get escape because we're already giving it to them. We're giving them that break. That would reduce their motivation. We can do the same thing with scheduling access to preferred attention, tangibles, or activities. So let's think about a caregiver who notices that their child will independently play nicely for about three to four minutes before they start engaging in inappropriate play. You know, they start banging items together, maybe they start throwing things or doing something else that's inappropriate or unsafe. We could have that caregiver plan to go over and provide attention every three to four minutes proactively to avoid the child's motivation for the attention that they get from the caregiver when they're inappropriate. Another function-based intervention that we can use that does not rely on extinction is a consequence-based intervention. So this means it's something that tells us what to do following the target behavior. Differential reinforcement of alternative behavior is a very common intervention. This is when we give the functional reinforcer, so we give the consequence that was maintaining the inappropriate behavior for some other behavior, usually something more appropriate. Differential reinforcement of alternative behavior often is paired with extinction. So let's talk about what that would look like quick so that we're clear. In a differential reinforcement of alternative behavior or a DRA contingency with extinction, I would no longer give the child the tablet for their inappropriate behavior, but I would give them their tablet if they engage in an appropriate behavior such as completing a chore. So that's that differential piece. You don't get it for this thing, but you do get it for the positive thing. 
Now we can do differential reinforcement without extinction. And one of the ways I like to do that is to make a continuum for some critical dimension of behavior, such as quality or duration, that shows people how to be differential, even if true extinction is never in place. And I'm going to give you guys an example of this so you can see. But just as a clear overview, why this might help is because it can avoid an extinction burst because we are giving a little bit of the consequence, even for inappropriate behavior. And therefore, we're more likely to have acceptable levels of integrity because caregivers are not expected to manage a large burst of behavior. Okay, so let's look at what a continuum would look like to help you understand a little bit more. In this example, I have an individual whose behavior is maintained by access to attention. So I'm going to create my continuum to have three types of attention. The first is non-reactive attention, followed by low quality attention, and then high quality attention. And I'm going to make sure that in my continuum, I'm very clear about what the student behavior is and how staff should respond. So for the first part, the student engages in per sharing personal information at an inappropriate time or with an inappropriate person. This had become very problematic because the student was not doing a lot of schoolwork because they were spending so much time trying to talk during class. And it was also problematic because they were sharing personal information in a way that represented a safety concern. So because this is such an um, inappropriate behavior and it's becoming dangerous to the individual, we really wanna do our best that we can to reduce it. However, giving straight extinction, meaning completely ignoring and giving no attention to this baby behavior was not functional because the student would continue to escalate and escalate until it became so disruptive that staff would have low integrity and respond. So instead, we told staff that when the student shares that personal information at an inappropriate time or with an inappropriate person, we want them to provide a neutral statement and redirect to the appropriate time or person. So they would say something like, okay, you can write that in your journal to share with your therapist. This worked very well because it did not provide a lot of attention to the inappropriate behavior. It provided very little, but it was sufficient to stop the student from spiraling. Another situation that we had with this student was that the student engaged in a lot of great self-advocacy, but sometimes it got um, to staff, it felt like the student was whining or complaining or making up issues in order to access attention. And so what we did is we made the student a student managed list of problems and concerns. These were things that the student could handle all by themselves. If the student then engaged in self-advocacy related to something that was on that list, the staff were instructed that they should provide the prompt of the choices that the student has of how to handle the situation. So for example, the student would a lot of times want to call the nurse down to come and give them you know, a band-aid, look at an ailment, whatever it may be. And that was maintained by that attention from the nurse then. So instead, if that student engaged in the self-advocacy and said, hey, I need a band-aid for this scrape, the staff would say, you have your options for how you can handle needing a Band-Aid. You have your first aid kit in your locker, or you can go wash the cutoff in the sink. Which one do you wanna do? Again, this is not providing no attention for the behavior, but it's a lower quality attention than the nurse would provide when they came down. Finally, we had the situation in which we were reinforcing that alternative behavior, the thing we really wanted to see more of, so we're gonna give this our high quality attention. For this student, it was the student being on task, being appropriate with their vocalizations, or the student appropriately accepting when a staff member was unavailable. So in that example of when a student asked to see the nurse, if we say, hey, the nurse is not available right now, the student says okay and moves on, that would be a time that we would want staff responding with high quality attention. For this student, that looked like things such as behavior-specific praise, giving sustained, so longer durations of attention than they gave in the other two categories. They might talk about a preferred topic or have a preferred conversation. And then we also included token reinforcers for this student in this high quality attention condition. So if you'll notice, this is a situation in which we have differential reinforcement. The level, amount, and quality of attention differs depending on the behavior. However, we never have true extinction in place. We're not telling caregivers to ignore the inappropriate behavior. 
This is really important because it is likely that these staff members were going to respond to the behavior in some way, shape, or form. So rather than letting them choose on their own how they're going to respond, we make a very clear continuum that ensures the best quality attention is given for the most appropriate behavior and the lowest quality attention is given for the least appropriate behavior. So I hope that this video has helped you see that function-based intervention does not always require extinction because the reality is extinction is not always the most useful uh, strategy to use in any situation. This is because that although extinction is an incredibly powerful tool, it can be so challenging because integrity falls when the extinction burst occurs. The more options that you as a provider are proficient in, the better, because it isn't one size fits all. We need to be able to tailor our recommendations and strategies to the situation at hand. I hope you found this video helpful in thinking beyond extinction for function-based interventions. If you like the content here, be sure to subscribe to my channel as I will periodically be creating similar videos that I will label as more ABA than ish because they're directed towards providers. Also, if you find this kind of content helpful, please consider sharing with the families or educators that you support so that they can tune in and learn from me as well as you. Have a great day.